Welcome everyone. We're here today at the American, the famous American Museum of Natural History on 77th Street in Manhattan. Why are we here at the American Museum of Natural History? Because we are starting a series on our, what would you call it, the reality tour based on the travels of Holden Caulfield in J.D. Salinger's book, The Catcher in the Rye. Mm -hmm. Now, in this book, he has many adventures in Manhattan uh, on foot as he, after he gets expelled from his school for Christmas break, he returns home to Manhattan on the subway a couple of days early. His parents don't know he's suspended yet, and he hangs out looking for truth. And uh, what else would you say? Uh, and uh, escape from phoniness. And the escape from phoniness. And one of the places he, he comes to is here, the famous American Museum of Natural History. And he discusses some of the things. He's looking for his sister Phoebe. His sister Phoebe is one of his best friends and who knows that he uh, is really at heart a good guy. So he can't find her. He buys a record called Little Shirley Beans for her. And he comes here to the Museum of Natural History because he knows that on Saturdays, the school takes the kids to the museum. Now I want to show you something. We're going right in here. We've already paid our admission. We've been allowed. Thank you. Pardon me. We've been allowed in. All right. Thanks very much. I appreciate it. That fine gentleman let us out and back in after we paid the admission. Now Holden discusses in chapter 16 the Hall of Northwest Coast Indians, and he discusses this famous, famously in chapter 16 he discusses this canoe when he was a kid and he came here as a child he loved this Indian war canoe which today is being held up by can you see this chains off the ground this used to be a much more impressive exhibit it was lower on the ground you could see they had uh, it was there were about 20 Indian figures in here rowing the oars came out and you could reach out and you could actually touch them and if you did that the security guard over there would say no touching children Salinger explains this all in chapter 16 of Catcher in the Rye Holden describes this as a really long canoe damn near the length of three Cadillacs and he goes on to discuss the guy in the back. The guy in the back was the witch doctor. They've taken all these figures out. But the guy in the back was the witch doctor. And the witch doctor, he said, gave him the creeps because he had a mask on. If you look over here, you can see there's a mask on the back of this ship. Let me see if I can. Let's see if we can get up and show you that. Can you just see that? Right here, there's a mask on the prow of that ship. It's actually the aft prow. But this is the, no, that is the prow of the ship. So no, guess what? The medicine man, witch doctor, would have been off that end. He was the last guy and he had a mask on and he, Holden said he gave me the creeps. He also goes on to describe this stone floor here, which you can see the tiles. But he said if you dropped a bunch of marbles there, they'd bounce around like madmen and make a hell of a racket. And then you'd have to pick them up, he says. Then his teacher would take them into this hall, the Hall of Northwest Coast Indians. He said there was a special door and you can see the oak door. And when you went in there, it was quieter in there. Everybody had to be quiet. You had to hold hands with your partner, which he also hated. What was her, his partner's name? Oh, I forget her name. Anyway, her hand was always sticky or sweaty or something, and he hated holding her hand. Now we're going to go in, and we're going to see some of the things they saw. Ready? Pardon me. Thanks. Okay. Look at this. The Hall of the Hall of the Northwest Indians. Now they would hold hands and they would walk quietly because they had to get through here. Because through there is the auditorium where they would show the IMAX film. Only in 1951 there was no IMAX, but it was definitely a theater where they showed movies. Uh, Holden explains that. It was always a movie about Columbus. No one gave a damn about Columbus, he said, but he ate a bunch of candy and popcorn and had a good time. 
on the way through this hallway, they said they would stop and look at this guy right here, this fisherman, where is he? Right here. He had already fished out two salmon. Can you see it? We'll try that anyway. And he said every time he came here, the same guy had two fish fished out of the fished out of the water. Every time he came, he stopped and looked at that fish. I'm gonna see if we can get a better angle over here. I hope this isn't boring. Okay. Then the teacher would have them continue on to the theater. You comment? where they would look at something else that was a little bit interesting when you were a little kid. We're looking for the squaw lady bent over, weaving a basket or something, and they used to all stop and examine and take a peek at her bosom, because that was very interesting when you were 10, and even he said the girls would look over and see, the, take a sneak peek at the bosom, because at that age, they didn't have any bosoms either, so they were curious, and oh my goodness, I think we found her. I think we found her. Oh, first, let me show you from here. He's writing about this figure right here, and if you just lean in just enough, I hope this doesn't become... Put the children to bed right now. Can you see that? I'm gonna make it fast because like I said, I told them to put the children to bed for that shot. But this is where, in chapter 16, he would explain that he wanted to go and meet Phoebe. But when he got to the front door of the museum, where we were just about six and a half minutes ago, when he got there, he said, he changed his mind. He couldn't go in. He started getting depressed. He talks about these glass cases and how you could come to this museum a hundred thousand times, and everything in these cases was the same. Mm -hmm. And he, that made him happy. Yes. He said, the only thing that was different when you came was you were different. Mm -hmm. He said, maybe you were wearing a different coat. Maybe your partner you had to hold hands with had scarlet fever, and you had a different partner that day. He said, May, and then he, he says, maybe you overheard your parents having a terrific fight in the bathroom. But you were different every time, but the things in the glass cases remained the same. And that makes him happy. He feels that when he's depressed, he wishes things wouldn't change so much. And he wishes that they, you could just put things in these glass cases in the museum and they'd remain forever. Makes you think, doesn't it? Yes. So, we're back here at the Indian canoe. Damn near the length of three Cadillacs, but it turns out it's 63 feet in length. I don't know if you knew that. Uh, and this is the room that Salinger describes in uh, Catcher in the Rye, which was written in 1951, published in, stand here like this, get the shot like that. Uh, Catcher in the Rye came out July 1951, but it was a product of t over 10 years work. Many articles he wrote, short stories based on Holden, stories about Holden wound up in Catcher in the Rye, and all these through the 40s wound up in Collier's Magazine, in uh, McCall's, and in uh, The New Yorker, which he was very proud to be published in The New Yorker. He published, didn't publish, he wrote a 90-page manuscript about Holden that was submitted to mm -hmm. The New Yorker, and they accepted, but in, at the 11th hour, Salinger, uh, he withdrew it, and they went on to become The Catcher in the Rye, 216 pages in 1951, published by Little and Brown. Or was it Brown and Little? No, it's Little and Brown. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed this. I hope it wasn't too boring. Coming to you from the American Indian Hall at the American Museum of Natural History. Hopefully first in a series of Holden Caulfield stomping ground pieces. Thanks for watching. Read a book.